Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Frankie Keaton, the wise entrepreneur. Thanks for coming on my video channel this evening. I have my guest speaker, Roger Birchand, and what we're going to talk about this evening is mindfulness and well-being, and why that's really important for us in the times we live in. Roger, good evening and welcome. Good evening. Okay. How are you, Roger? I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, like everybody else, we all struggle with this uh, pandemic, and we all struggle because we have to to uh, really uh, follow some rules. Uh, well, rules about distance, distance uh, between people. We all have to follow rules about how many people we can be with at any moment in time, and it's quite difficult. And I was just reading an article a bit earlier about uh, about snooker, and some of the top stars are actually. Uh, withdrawn one from one of the big tournaments because they have to follow certain rules, like everybody else, I suppose. But some of them just cannot cope with it, and uh, in that they uh, they can just go out for a, a, a stroll or getting so, having some fresh air and, and and a cup of coffee. And and the very man saying that is just uh, Rene O'Sullivan. Uh, so he's withdrawn from that. Um, from that tournament. I mean, okay, he might be um, a millionaire, he may, he's a star, he's a top guy, yeah, and uh, that's fair enough, but he's like everybody else at the end of the day, he's a human being, isn't he? So, uh, so they only thought from not being able to go out of the, of the sports uh, hall and, um, and go for a, a coffee or just a walk. No, it's, um, so he decided to withdraw. So good luck to the people who've replaced him. So there are two people like that who decided not to, not to attend. So well-being, mental health is so, it just highlights the fact that, you know, uh, it doesn't matter how many million you have in the bank account, your mental health is also very, very precious. You know. Mindfulness and Roger. What is mindfulness from well-being? Because mindfulness for me is really looking after our minds, really not letting our minds pick up negative thoughts. But then if you have a negative thought, we change it into a positive thought. So mind yeah. is really yes. important that we look yeah. after our mind. And it's very hard to do that, isn't it, in the times that we're living in. So oh, mindfulness yeah. is really being aware of how people are feeling around us. Because me and you may be strong, Roger, but there's people around us who are really suffering, really scared. You know, yeah. really worried about the future, have a lot of fear. So we've really got to be mindful about everyone, everyone around us. And yeah. we know that the media, and we know that TV sometimes can manipulate us, and it's really oh. important that we don't get manipulated, you know, by the TV and really stay focused. So that's really what mindfulness is, being mindful of everything around us and other people around us. And our well-being is really important, isn't it, Rotary? Because I know that I put on weight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, you have done that. Okay, I did that though. Pandemic, you know, so, uh, and it's interesting at the start of the year, I started the gym. Now I stopped going to the gym and I've put on weight because of the pandemic. And now oh, right, I'm because of it. Uh, okay. Because right. obviously we're not very busy as entrepreneurs. So, um, you know, it's really being mindful and really having well being is really important. The two of them have to go together for us to, to, to keep sane, you know, to, to, to keep, you know, to keep, in, to keep sane, you know, and not lose our insanity. Well, a lot of people probably are, you know, um, getting a little bit desperate and a little bit anxious. So that's we, yeah. important. Yeah. It is, I mean, the amount of people who are going to need help from, from uh, life coaches and coaches in different ways is going to be, I think the, the, the demand is going to be overwhelmed. The demand for help is going to be quite something, isn't it? And uh, like Maria mentioned earlier in a, a, a online networking event, the number of people that are asking for help is quite, it's such a lot and it's not surprising. I mean, the, the, uh, there is going to be, I mean, uh, I'm not usually skeptical about what's going on, and I'm not really. I know there is a lot of um, manipulation behind the scene, manipulation that we don't see, that's for sure. And uh, 
I do believe that the virus does exist, but I also started to believe that some gov some uh, countries are going to take advantage of it in terms of uh, controlling the the population to instill fear in in people's mind. And when you instill fear in people's mind, people stop doing things altogether. And then, so just for example, encourage people to be mindful of themselves. How, what sort of measure of mindfulness and well-being for the person, if he wants to watch this, how do we inspire him to be mindful and to have well-being? Right, I think prob yeah, probably now, uh, because of all this, I mean, in the past, I have been, uh, I've been to a lot of different events and we're talking about having goals and, and stuff like that. And I think now, is becoming even more of a necessity to have goals and to really focus on them. Because in the past, sometimes when we have goals, we are a bit relaxed about it. But now I think for your own sanity, I think working towards your goal is probably one way, one of the ways, I don't know the others yet, but one of the ways to keep you sane and to achieve what you want. Because you're right, Frankie, when you mentioned earlier that uh, you know, it's so easy to be sucked in in a lot of different things, whether it's conspiracy th theory, whether it's something else. And then we know for a fact there is something going on. So whatever that might be, um, then we know it's not all uh, clean as, you know, and we know the media have a tremendous power on, uh, and it can, it can actually uh, goes into, go into your mind and we don't even re realizing it. So really, it's about us all then, really being mindful of how other people are feeling. Yeah, and then also and about our well-being our... is really important because if we don't have our well-being intact, Roger, we don't be, we don't become mindful. Because no, and then healthy body, healthy mind. So if our body's not healthy, our mind can become distorted, can't it? Absolutely, because like. Uh, but I just uh, give you an example. Like, for example, uh, I've uh, I hardly watch television, but I started to watch again uh, programs like Rick and Got Talents because they don't go on about it, because they focus on the people who are there. Okay, they have a virtual audience and all that, but they don't go on and on and on about it. Now, when you, I listen to the news a little bit, but I've even reduced that even more now just to know what uh, and we need to do, we can't do, we can do, you can't do. So you can do in the, in one side of the road and you can't do it on the other side of the road. So it's that's just a truck. And then, uh, and stuff like that. And then you've got places where the rate is lower than in, in other places. And yet there is more restrictions in those places. Now, and, and then uh, people are getting confused and mentally it's no good for the population. I mean, it's affecting hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of people. What's, it, what, what's the mental health of the nation going to be like in 20 years time, 30 years time? So, I mean, in 30 years time, I'm, I will be 91, uh, hopefully. Uh, I'll be still here on this planet, but if I am not, I am not. But what's going to happen to the, you know, to the next generic, to, to the mental health of a country? I mean, can you imagine like a, a country of 60 million in 60, 67 million inhabitants and one third is affected badly by mental health and then the others are kind of surviving. Can you imagine the effect? I mean... But Rosé, as spiritual leaders, which we are, because I'm a spiritual leader, and I honestly believe that meditation is going to have a big impact on the world. It's already having now. But meditation and spiritual meditation is going to play a deep role in society to transform the world because our mind needs meditation, our mindfulness needs spiritual meditation and our well-being does and more people are doing it. So we know that being in touch with ourselves and being in touch with our spirit through meditation is going to help a lot of people look inwards rather than looking outwards because people yeah. realise the problem yeah. outwards and not our problems, what is how we feel inside is really important. Our mindfulness, our well-being, and how we feel on the inside. How do yeah. we help people 
to become happy. And spirituality teaches you that. That happiness is within. Happiness is all in our lives. That's what's going yeah. to change the world when we all understand that on a deep level. So I'm Absolutely. Sure you want to leave it with something on spiritual meditation, how it can affect mindfulness and well-being? Yeah, I would say that uh, we, did, we need to be able to control our emotions and even more so now. Even more so now because there is a, a, a big rise in uh, domestic violence. There is a big rise in other type of violence and stuff like that. And, and obviously people are going to be so frustrated and irritated and they wouldn't know what to do. And so most of the- What Roger said about emotions, I would say a great book for you viewers mm -hmm. is a book called Emotional Intelligence. They say it's higher than having a high, emotional intelligence is higher than having a high IQ. Emotional oh, yeah. intelligence and emotional quotient are so important. And if you have this, you will really succeed in everything that you do in life, yeah. whatever is thrown at you. Yeah. So, and I think, well, James, yeah. you'd like to say a few last words? Yeah, there is a, a quote somewhere. So if you could bear with me, so uh, let me find this quote because it's a good one. And, um, and it says, I've got it here. And that actually works very well with what we're just saying. And it's a Buddhist quote. And it's, it goes like that, okay? Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so, um, right. It, yeah. Okay, so I read the quote slowly so people can understand it, okay? Never be shaken, no matter what happens or what others may say. Never be flustered, never lose confidence. This is the way we should strive to live our lives. Being able to do so is a sign of genuine character. And that's from Dazaku Ikeda. And uh, so I'm going to lead into I'm guess me, the way I would leave you with is yeah. Yeah. So I would definitely, um, yeah, I think. This is a good course to finish this kind of conversation and it's even more true now with what's going Remember on. Remember to stand alone and stand upright and tall because, you know, the world will always notice somebody who stands alone. Very few people don't understand it, but they will see it. And it's yeah. really important for us all to stand alone and be mm -hmm. that shining light in this dark world what we're living at this moment. So... Thank you again, viewers, for tuning in. We're going to leave it there. I'd like to thank my guest speaker, Roger Bertrand. Thank you so much, Roger. This is my YouTube channel. If you like what you hear, subscribe below. Hit that little notification bell. You know you can find us on social media, www.membbyy.com. Thank you, Dash Kington. I'm Roger at the same address as well. So thanks again, viewers, for really tuning in today, this evening. And I look forward to speaking to you very soon. But please be mindful, have well-being, and take care and look after yourself. Bye-bye. I was just going to say, look after yourself. Bye-bye.